fun in a church. It's a ministry that, that creates excitement. And you don't get that so much anyway. But if you have a bunch of kids together and you have a ball or you have balloons, then you have excitement. And if kids are excited, the teachers are excited. And if the teachers are excited, the parents are excited because their kids are looked after and they are, they are having fun. So it is a fun ministry. And if you have a sour person within children's ministry, fire them today. Because we cannot have sour people with our children. We want to have fun. It must be about fun. And it starts with you. It's going to start with you. Right, so before I go into the practical things, there is four things that I really want to speak about that is crucial. For me, that is the foundation on how to build a supernatural children's ministry. Now, I know that there's a lot of children's ministries. There is awesome curriculums that there's actually so much you can't choose. It's, it's, there's a lot of stuff out there, and it's brilliant things. But what separates us from a, a different church? The only thing that separates us is the supernatural. That's the only thing. Ministry is not a department in a church. Children's ministry is a ministry in a church. So children's ministry is a mini church within a church. Okay? It's not just a department that gets together and let's just quickly do something. Children's ministry is a ministry. Everything that the big, ch the big people do in church, we do in children's ministry. So we also praise and worship. We also do a salvation call. We also testify. We also do baptisms. We have the word, we have activation, we're praying for the children, we activate them. So everything that the big church does, the kids do. We do it in, uh, on a kid's level and we really try to make it fun and applicable to their age group. But that is what we do. We are a ministry and we have to see ourselves that way. What we want to do is we want to help our volunteers to change their minds. We want to change their minds from babysitting. Are we looking after your kids? No, we're not looking after your kids. We are ministering to your kids. Say, for example, your senior pastor comes to you in this week. All right? He tells you, listen, I cannot do Sunday service. You have to do Sunday. You have to run the service. You have to do something. What are you going to do? You're going to run away. Okay. You're going to pray that week. You're going to fast, you're going to prepare, you're going to lay before the Lord to know that you have the word for this church, right? Is that right? Yes. But that is what our senior pastors is asking of us. As children's ministry, our senior pastors are trusting us to minister to the little ones of the church, to the little sheep. That is our mission. That is why we are and having children's ministry. We're not having it to look after kids or just babysitting, put on a movie and there they go. No, we are there to minister to these children. We are preparing them for youth and for adult life. That's what we're doing. So that's the first thing we need to sh shift within our minds. I know that most of us that grew up in church and grew up in children's ministries, they had a way of doing children's ministry, right? They had their book and they read through their book and when we're done, we would color in a picture and that's it, right? Well, that's how our children's ministry was where I grew up. And that's it. So they just keep you busy while the parents are busy. That has to change. It's a ministry and we're there to minister to our children. You are the pastor of that class, of that congregation. You are the pastor for that Sunday. And you have to take that responsibility seriously. That is how serious we are about children's ministry. We're not here to babysit. We're literally here to take territory and take the devil's territory. He's playing around with our kids. He's, he's doing all these na naughty and ugly stuff. You know what happened on Facebook now with that other demon girl that comes and tells them. They have to follow her instructions for 50 days. She tells them how to kill themselves. You start by doing this, then you cut yourself, then you cut the week deep. after you have to cut deeper, and then you have to do the act of killing yourself. Mono is the, Momo is the thing's name. It comes up when they search something on the internet, and this demon comes up and tells them what to do. They interact with the kids. Now the devil is out there to steal and kill our children. We cannot just babysit. 
we have a commandment from the Lord. We have an assignment from God that we have to get our kids to serve God from a young age. When we pray for our children, we pray. We say, Lord, we declare they will not go into rebellion. They will not choose the, the ways of the world, but they will serve you from a young age. We plant them in this house. We declare that over our children, that they will serve God. So that is your first big mind shift to get into and to encourage your volunteers. That is not just about babysitting here. It's about a ministry. We are giving and ministering to these children. That is the first step. The second one that we're going to talk about is the ingredient for the supernatural. Now let's see, who can tell me what do you think is the ingredient for a supernatural church or for a supernatural children's ministry? Yes, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the ingredient for any supernatural ministry. Now think about this. If we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we don't have a mini Holy Spirit and a big Holy Spirit. Can you agree with that? Yes. The Holy Spirit doesn't have an age. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Now, we can have a child of six, seven, eight years old being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not determined on age. Anyone can experience the Holy Spirit. Anyone can have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. They don't have to understand it in their minds. Their spirit has to understand it. Okay? So that is where we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is the one that we use, that we need, that we function on in our services. So we have our preschool department, and if we, we teach the children, we tell them the Holy Spirit is a gift. And if I give you a gift, what are you going to do? You're going to take the gift and you're going to receive it. So now the Holy Spirit wants to give you speaking in tongues. We want to help you to get that. Then we pray for our children and they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Ages three, four, five, they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's important because we cannot have a supernatural children's ministry without the Holy Spirit and without the evidence of speaking in tongues. We need the evidence of speaking in tongues to have power and the supernatural. So if you have never thought about how to have children's ministry in a supernatural way, this is step one. Step one will be that you will ensure firstly that your volunteers are baptized in the Holy Spirit. They can speak in tongues. The second thing is your children need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. So that will be your first step. If you can go back on this Sunday or next Sunday and you can explain to the children who is the Holy Spirit and what He wants to give to them. And then you pray for them and activate them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We have um, this situation where we have a lot of times visitors. So our kids, that's always here, yeah, they can pray in tongues, but now we have visitors. So what do we do? We ask our children to pray for the other children. Because they're activated. They can pray in tongues. So they can lay their hands on someone and they can pray for them. That's how we activate them. That's how we use our children also to know that God wants to use them. So the Holy Spirit is not there just for big people. The Holy Spirit can move in your services, in your praise and worship. The Holy Spirit wants to encounter your children. He wants to come and touch them. We want those souls to be saved. So they have to experience the Holy Spirit. Are you excited about that? Okay, it's exciting. We want that. We want the Holy Spirit to come and touch our children, move within them. Right, the third thing that we need to discuss, and I think you're going to hear it, and this language you're going to hear a lot, is supernatural atmosphere. Supernatural atmosphere. So we're talking about atmospheres, and I'm sure Apostle Nikki is going to talk about atmospheres, how to shift atmospheres, how to build an atmosphere. Now, children's ministry is exactly that. Let me share my testimony with you. I grew up in the church. I grew up in a supernatural church. For those of you that know um, old uh, Pastor Nikki van der Westhuizen, we used to be in the tent services. Okay, so I grew up in a supernatural. God healed me of asthma. God healed me of so many things. 
And that is why I know I grew up in that. So what happened is growing up, going to youth, doing everything God wants me to do. Then I went and studied. And a lot of parents are so afraid sending their children to university. Because now, no, gonna talk. No, so they're just going to lose it. They're going to leave all boundaries and they're just going to go. So I went to university. And guess what happened? Whenever I went to, with my friends to a club or to a place where it's not this, it's stuff happening, it's not godly. When we went there, guess what happened? I felt uncomfortable. Why did I feel uncomfortable? Because my spirit was used to an environment where the Holy Spirit are. And as soon as I was taken out of that environment, and I was placed in a different environment, I felt out of place. And I knew this is not the place for me. So guess what happened? I never acted out. I never lost my salvation. I never tried all kinds of things at university. I enjoyed it. I loved it. But I never had to go wild. Because there was something in me, there was substance within me knowing that I know who I am. And I will not turn my back on that. That is what we create in children's ministry. We create a supernatural atmosphere that is conducive for the Holy Spirit to move. So what happens? Children come to our children's ministry. They sit under that anointing. They sit in that atmosphere. Now, when they grow up and they go into a different atmosphere... They feel uncomfortable. It's like a fish out of water. If you take the fish out of water, what happens? It can't breathe. It cannot function. It needs that water. As soon as they're back in the water, they feel, this is my place. This, this is where I belong. And we want to do that for our children. I know. Listen, and I have some of my, my volunteers in the, here in the audience as well, and they can vouch for this. You Don't look at them while we worship. Because, you know, they like poking this one and they <laughs> like, I don't know, some of them lay on the floor. We think they're worshipping. Meantime, they're sleeping. So <laughs> they, the, the preschoolers are rolling around. Okay. So you get discouraged sometimes and you think, Lord, are they, ever, are they, are they even tapping in? Are they? Because they don't tap in like adults. They don't like close their eyes and all of that. So, you sometimes feel like, yo, am I doing this right? What is wrong here? Please, I want to encourage you, never, never stop pushing for the atmosphere of God. Because my 12-year-old uh, was serving the preschoolers last Sunday. So my youngest son is in preschool. So the sister comes, she tells me, mom, he is not listening in class. So I'm like, why are you not listening? No, I am listening. She says, Mommy, he's under the chairs. He's not even listening to the teacher. So I'm like, you know that you have, you're the pastor and then your children is just like doing whatever they want to. So the, by the evening, the teacher sent me a video clip of my child standing in front of the class and saying the memory verse. And I showed it to his sister and I said, see ya, he did listen. She's like, but mom, he, he was playing. How did he listen? I said, exactly. It seems as if they're not listening. But they are. he could say that whole memory verse. And he's not a very outgoing. He's very shy. And yet he knows. He could, could say six years old and he could say his memory verse. Because he was listening. They're little, they, they are like sponges. They're just taking up everything. And even in a godly atmosphere, guess what they're getting? All of that, their spirits are just absorbing that. So I know it looks like they're not participating or they're not entering into the presence of God. But just keep on doing it. Keep on doing this. Because you know what? One day, they're going to experience God in a supernatural way. He's going to encounter that child. And that encounter is going to set him for life. For the rest of his life, that encounter is going to set him. How many of you had experience in children's ministry where you can say, I got saved in children's ministry? Anyone? Yes. I got saved in children's ministry. Here we've got a few people here. You got saved, and that set you for life. That encounter made a difference in your life. And we want to make sure that our children have the opportunity. We want to be the, the conductor of the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, we are allowing you 
to move. And we know that our children will get their encounter. Before they leave children's ministry at the age of 13, we believe that they will have an encounter with God and they will have an active relationship with Jesus. That is our aim, to create a supernatural atmosphere where their spirits can absorb what is in their atmosphere. A lot of times they come back and they, pro they testify and they say, I was at school and my, my friend was sick and then I prayed for him. I'm like, this child, this child never listened. <laughs> this child is just like hyperactive, never sits still. He's like, we have to make, we have to, you know those kids that you have to use for them not to <laughs> disrupt the class? So it's like, I have an important job for you today. You have to do, you have to sit here and you have to see that everyone listens. But it's actually to keep that one busy. And then that child comes. And he's like, that friend of mine was sick. And I prayed for him. And I said, sickness, go in Jesus' name. And then he was healed. And that is how the environment just comes and absorbs our children. I love it to see how they grab what we have. Even though you don't really think they did. But they did. They, they grab in the atmosphere. So we love to see that. Um, I wanted to say something else about that. You see, I talk too much. <laughs> Not even on my notes. Okay, how do we build this atmosphere? How do we build an atmosphere, the supernatural atmosphere? Firstly, it starts in the week already. So during the week, we have to pray. We have to pray for Sunday services. Earlier, I explained to you how we pray. We declare our, over our children. They will have encounters with you. Lord, they will, have, they will see you face to face. That is the things that we pray for our children. So we pray for, for a Sunday, and we make sure that, that the atmosphere is set for Sunday. So prayer is your first thing. The second thing is worship. Praise and worship. We have to worship. We worship God. And again, don't worship until you see the kids are tired. <laughs> they get tired. They're tired before we worship. They're tired already. So it's not about what they do, how they respond, nothing like that. You know the purpose behind the worship. So it's about the volunteers. Yourself, your volunteer team, it's about them. They have to push in the worship. You know how to do it as adults. The adults need to do it. You have to create that atmosphere. If you feel the atmosphere is down and it's flat and no one, it's your responsibility to say, okay, kids, listen, let's speak in tongues. Then we're going to speak in tongues and we're going to just, you know, get the kids focused, get the, get the volunteers focused. Then we're going to worship God and then trust God that he will come. But your volunteers play a vital, vital role in creating that atmosphere. So you have volunteers, obviously, that can keep, you worship with your eyes open. You learn how to do that. Okay, because you cannot close your eyes. <laughs> because then you don't know what's going to happen when your eyes are closed. So usually what we try to do is the person that is leading the praise and worship, we depend on that person to really close his eyes or her eyes, tap into what God has, hear the Spirit of God. So they will not focus on the, the children at all. The rest of the volunteers, we worship, but we worship with our eyes open because we have to see who's punching who and all of that. So you have that one person that you, re that you, fo you want them to focus what God wants. Then a lot of times that person will say, I feel that the Holy Spirit wants to do this and this and this. They cannot do it when they are distracted. So help them not to be distracted. Tell them, you close your eyes. If you're in charge of worship, you close your eyes and we want to hear what God is saying. You have to hear. We cannot because we're observing the children as well. So the rest of us, we worship, we speak in tongues, and we do it loudly so the kids can hear and they can see our example. They have to see you worship. You cannot stand there at the back and like just wait for it to be over. You are the example so help them so that they can worship God. And that brings me to point number four, which is important, is your volunteers. Your volunteers are extremely important. I ca we cannot build a children's ministry without volunteers. You alone cannot do it. 
You cannot. And I know it's difficult to get people involved in children's ministry. Children's ministry is a very lonely place because it, uh, it's children's ministry and I would say security. Those two uh, ministries, they're not in the service while the service is going on. So they in a separate place. They're totally separated from a Sunday service, although they make out the, the complete Sunday service, but they're at a different place. And that makes it a lonely place. So people are not necessarily want to serve at children's ministry. But that is where you as the pastor or the leader comes in. You have to appreciate your volunteers. Appreciate them. Love them. Spend time with them. Pray together. Prepare together. Pray together. Cry together. Everything you can for those volunteers. You cannot do children's ministry without a strong team of volunteers. So spend time with your volunteers. Make sure that you build with them. Don't be here and your volunteer team are there and you just give instructions. That's not, you cannot build children's ministry like that. You have to be involved with them. Now, on that, to have volunteers is one thing. But you want volunteers that are plugged into the vision. They are sons and daughters in the house. They carry the DNA of the house because if they stand in front of children and they speak about anything, you will hear the language as they speak. For example, we are the remnant. So when my teachers are teaching, what do I hear? I hear, hey guys, are you ready? Are you the remnant? All the remnant kids stand up. And that's not our name. We are NBCFC kids. But remnant is the language that we hear from the stage. That is the DNA. So we hear the language of activation. We hear the language of testify. We hear the language of supernatural. So because the volunteers are plugged into the vision, they are plugged into the DNA of the house, I don't have to relay the message to them the whole time. They have to connect to the vision. My purpose is to encourage them to get involved in the vision. It's to make sure that you do your equip levels, to make sure that you grow. And if I see something is wrong, I think you need to go for inner healing and deliverance. Or I think you need to do this or this. So I, I observe them. I check them. And my purpose is to make sure they stay connected. They stay connected to the house. They stay connected. If they're not on a Sunday, if they're not here, they're not here for weeks going on holiday and whatever, I'm going to ask them, listen, I see you're not in church for a while. What's going on? So we have to make sure that they stay plugged in. Then you won't have any troubles with your volunteers. Okay? All right. Now, at the beginning, it's difficult because you are everything. You pack the chairs, you clean, you open, you get everything for the kids. You are preschool and big kids teacher. You are everything. And you there every Sunday. But just trust God. You know what? I realize this is not my kids. It's God's kids. He knows I need teachers. He knows, Lord, if I have to look after your children, then you send me the help. Send me the help. Send me people that can help me. And he did. God is so faithful. He sent us people that is so, so, so faithful. How many years, Eugenia, are you guys with us? Seven? Seven or eight years in children's ministry serving with us. And that, where is Rudy? Rudy? Also seven years. Okay, team, team leaders of children's ministry that is involved in children's seven years already. How do they stay involved? Well, it's not easy, right? It's difficult. <laughs> it's not easy. But we made a decision and we said, you know what? Commitment is not a feeling. Commitment is a, it's a promise. Okay, it's a promise. It's your heart. So if, if you are committed to children's ministry because you feel like it, i.e., you're not going to feel like it lots of Sundays. A lot of Sundays you're going to, I'm quitting. I'm not doing this no more. So it's not about feeling. It's about your commitment that you made to God and to your church to say, I'm committed to this that we spoke about now. That big picture, I'm committed to that. I'm committed that these kids will have an encounter with God. I'm committed that they will be saved. And that should be your motivation. Not to be seen. You're definitely not in children's ministry to be seen. 
Amen? Because no one is seeing you. <laughs> no one is ever seeing you. And you will not see the fruit. That's the worst part of it. You're not going to see the fruit now. You're not going to preach something on Sunday and then today you see, oh, this is awesome. You see that five years later, ten years later. <coughs> Eugenia's child went to university this year. She started in children's ministry when I was in children's ministry. She started there, what, grade two, about there. Now she's in university, serving God, involved in a church. And that is the fruit that we see at this stage. Maybe you're just starting out. Your church is new. You don't have a lot of kids. But you have a few. And those few you want to take through for them to serve God at the end of the day. So your volunteers are extremely, extremely important. A practical point on that, how we do it currently, is we have four teams. So every Sunday, one team is on duty, which means that they're only on duty once a month. And you say, praise God. Yes, because I know, I know you're not there yet. But that is the place where you want to come to, where you want to serve. So what we do is we have three services on a Sunday. So our volunteers... Team one served the whole Sunday. So you're on duty, first service, second service, and evening service for that Sunday. But then you're not on duty again for three Sundays. Okay. Only the fourth Sunday you're on again. It helps the teams. It helps them to not burn out. It helps them to prepare. They have three weeks to prepare a lesson. They can plan their holidays around that. They can plan their things around that. They get a roster so they know when they're on duty. And that, that team is on for the whole day. The reason why we're doing it is we have a lot of preparation that we do. So if you prepare for first service and you expect a different team to prepare for second service, that just doesn't make sense. So we rather serve one day, complete the one day, and then we, we can worship in the auditorium for the next three weeks. Now, it wasn't like that. We only moved up to four teams end of last year. Before that, we had only three teams. So what happened? Every third week, you're on duty. Before that, we only had two teams. So then you're on every second week. And before that, we were just all there. <laughs> okay. But again, we didn't have three services in the beginning. So it is easier. Maybe you only have morning services for now. Maybe you have evening services, depending how you work. But as I said, remember, it's God's children and he's going to provide in all of your needs. You have a need for godly volunteers. God knows your need. So trust God that he will supply in your need. You're going to have to do some work. You're going to ask some people, listen, I see you drop your kids here every week. Don't you want to come and serve? Parents need to serve. Parents need to serve. They bring their children and we, we would really encourage parents to get involved and to serve. If they hear that on only once a month, it makes it easy for them. They feel, okay, I can do that. And that is how they get involved. They get in, involved in children's ministry. Okay, so that was my four pointers that I wanted to give you and leave with you today. To make sure, number one, that you understand it's a ministry. Number two is that the Holy Spirit is the most important ingredient. Number three, a supernatural atmosphere that you want to create. And number four, your volunteer team. So that's the four important things. I know I can talk a lot about a lot of other aspects, but that was the four things I really thought that it will be able, you will be able to start running with that. So hopefully just after this few minutes, you have already a plan of action that you think, okay, I'm going to start with this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to build on that, I'm going to work on that. So there is a few things. Before we go to practical things, I just want to tell you on our worship. When we praise and when we worship, we worship on the big people songs. So what we do is, yes, our preschoolers, we have nice songs for them. Their songs is actually included in their curriculum, so we use that song. But we also put a worship song with that where we worship and teach them how to worship. But then our, our bigger kids, uh, we praise and worship on the songs that we sing in church. So I just want to say that our kids rock 
the, re the Remnant song. That song that you sang, Remnant, they rock it. They even have moves on that. They have put moves on there, and I don't know what, so I can't even do that. But they are just awesome on that song. So, again, why do we do this? Do they understand everything? No. But it's important for their spirits to declare the right things, to declare the Word of God, to worship on the songs that we worship. Obviously, it helps the youth, because when our kids go to youth, they're used to everything. They know how to testify, they know how to worship, they know the songs, all of that. Again, the flip side, our youth, we have a, a few of the youth that's involved in children's ministry on a Sunday. So what do they do? They bring those songs that they do at youth, they bring that to children's ministry. And it's like, can we do this song? We're doing it at youth. It's like, yeah, fine. Then they plug it in and they do all kind of moves and they do a fall thingy, I don't know what, and what that other one that you, see, I can't do it. That's why I have my great floss. Vosho. Okay. You see, they do all, and they jump on one leg thing. So that's what they do. But we, we really try to keep to the DNA. And it's also easier for you, then you don't have to look for songs. Just ask the worship team, listen, what are you doing on Sunday? Can you make us some backtracks? Can you make us some CDs? Can we... Get your music and you get it from there. What we do now is we just, down, we just get YouTube um, videos. So we don't even have to worry about lyrics. It's on there already. So you download YouTube songs. You make a playlist and they sing from there. Because then the words is up there already. So it's not even difficult. Okay. Right. Let me quickly tell you. Speaking about curriculum. Now I know that's a question. What do you use? What do you do? How do you do it? So... Curriculum, you have to have a curriculum. As I told you, there's so many different ones. You can Google free curriculums. As long as you have one, I don't want you to think on a, on a Friday, oh, what are we going to do Sunday? We cannot plan like that. We cannot work like that. So you have to have a curriculum. Which one? You really, actually, I don't care. I really don't care which one you use because there's not... A manual for the supernatural there's not a manual that you can say okay your lesson today is about uh, our lesson was about uh, chaos and God's peace that's what the lesson was about on Sunday that God wants to take you out of chaos and give you his peace what did we do we took that lesson and we applied the supernatural to it so we prayed for our children that's going through chaos in their lives we commanded that chaos to come to a silence and we asked the peace of God to come in and to step into our services. Guess what happened on Sunday? The peace of God came. The peace of God took a hold of our children. They were crying. They were touched by the presence of God. They were touched by the peace of God. And that is what we want. So you can take any lesson or curriculum and you can make it your own. If you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and touch you, allow the Holy Spirit to move, then He will. He will move. Doesn't matter what you use. So, saying that, wherever you are, if you can afford something, if you cannot afford something, doesn't matter. Just make it work what you have. Make it work. If you sit in a small little class, we had Wendy houses. That's how we started. Remember the Wendy houses? It was cold and it was hot. And it was terrible. It was cracking. The floors was cracking. And there was hochos coming out. So that's where we started. But we used what we had. Don't, that doesn't have to be an excuse. It doesn't have to. The Holy Spirit can move through hochos and cr cracking floors and everything. The Holy Spirit can still move. It's, it's not dependent on where you are. Just take what you have and start with that. Start making it your own. Start being excited about that. All right? What we're doing is we have two different curriculums. The one that we use for preschool is different from the bigger kids because with our bigger kids program, we struggled with the preschoolers. It was just a bit above their um, understanding. So now we're using Orange, and Orange is, um, it's their first section is called First Look. So First Look of Orange. They, um, T.D. Jakes also using them. We went to T.D. Jakes conference and that is where we were exposed to this curriculum. What's very nice about it, you get everything on there. You get your social media stuff, you get songs, 
uh, you get, get your lessons, you get games, you get art activities, you even get stuff that you can send home for the parents. There is a lot of things to do with that curriculum, okay? It's costly because you pay in dollars for it. It's online, which is nice, so you pay a yearly fee and you get your material, you just download it. And you, you have it for three months in advance. So I already have March, April, June. Up to June I already have. So that's nice. They have preschool, then they have one grade one to threes, then they get have five to sevens, and they even have stuff for youth as well. So very nice program if you can afford it, it's very nice. Um, for the preschoolers, then for the grade one to sevens, we use Transformation Station, and that is from Metro Child Ministries. Metro Child Ministries from Bill Wilson. And um, it's also very nice, you pay, you pay online and, and you download it, you get it immediately. This is a cheaper option, we used to use only that, and we try to adapt it for our preschoolers as much as we could until we can go to the preschool uh, curriculum now. Okay, but Transformation Station, very nice. It's more cost effective, um, but again, it's in dollars. So if you feel that you cannot afford that, cannot do that, there's a lot of stuff available. This, the things we're using is not supernatural curriculums. It's not. Because the Holy Spirit needs to flow. The Holy Spirit needs to do. And you have to take that. And the DNA of your house needs to be displayed in your children's ministry. So I cannot give you and say, you have to take this. Because your DNA is going to be different. We sing a remnant song. I don't know what you do. But uh, so what you have. If you don't have anything, please start somewhere. You have to have a curriculum. You have to have something that you build on, that you follow. You don't want your kids to come there and it's like, oh, Noah again. How many times do we have to learn about Noah? So <laughs> please, you have to build on something. And think about this. You have children that next year, they're going to a bigger grade. So you don't want to repeat everything you've done this year. You want to build on something. So go look for something that's working for your church. All right? But if you don't have anything and you, you want to go and research some of these that I mentioned, you're more than welcome. Okay. Any questions on curriculum before I move on? No? Sure? Okay, you can ask. I'm not afraid of questions yet. Yes. Okay. Okay. She asked, um, "How do your how do your volunteers grow spiritually if they're missing services?" Okay. Well, in our case, because we having church, we we don't feel that we're missing out anything because the Holy Spirit comes and He works in such a significant way in our service that the, the volunteers also experience Him. For example, on Sunday when we did the peace of God. We received so much, presenting that to the children, and we received, in the presence of God, we also received, okay? So that is the first thing. We have to understand, we not, and they have to understand, they're not missing out. Remember, the Holy Spirit is here the same as He is in the big church, okay? But what we do have is all the recordings that they do in a Sunday of a service, we give those CDs to our um, to our volunteers for free. They don't have to pay for services. They can just get the CDs or download the app and the podcast so they can listen to, so we encourage them, listen to the messages. Make sure that you listen to the messages. And then the second thing is, if they serve this Sunday, they have to be in church the next Sunday. Even if you're a small group, if you're a small volunteer group of four people, how many are you? How many people in your team? Three people. Okay, so you have to do it like this. That one Sunday you're off, you're not on duty. Then the next Sunday you're on, and the next Sunday you're on, and then you're off. Something like that. So just work it in a cycle. But they have to be off as well. They cannot be in children's ministry every, every time. 
So you have to try to get a roster where one is off and two is serving. Then the other one is off, two is serving. And you have to do that. As you go through the whole um, process now, you'll see we have a road map where we have different growth things. In your church, if you have a foundational course, you have a Bible college, you have a equip, like we have equip courses, we encourage our people to go there. We actually say to them, you cannot be a volunteer until you have done inner healing and deliverance. That is step three. So if they've done inner healing and deliverance, then only can they start serving with us. So again, we plug them into the spiritual growth track of the church. Okay? All right. Just quickly before we leave, you have to have fun. Okay? Next serious stuff. All right? You have to have fun. Okay, so... Um, yeah, this is one of our pastor's sons. He's also in youth and he doesn't mind getting and acting and getting into funny clothes. Yeah, is, this is my husband. And then we prayed for that little boy on Sunday. He had uh, pain and we prayed for him. And after we prayed for him, the pain was gone. So God worked in awesome ways. That's, this is my husband again. He also don't mind getting into anything. And then we had a special day with a clown coming. So we do extra stuff as well. Our, um, there's some of our kids. So when we present the lesson, we're not standing like I'm doing now. No way. And you're definitely not standing with papers. If I see papers in your hand, I'd burn it. Because <laughs> how is kids responding if you're standing? You look like a teacher, man. Uh -uh. We don't want that. So no papers, right? We prepare. Our volunteers get together once a month and we prepare for the next month's lesson. So we have a preparation night. On a Thursday night, we prepare and then we go into um, the next month. So we are in, uh, prepared a month in advance. But yeah, we use our children. They also love acting out, dressing up, being part of the lesson. So we get them involved to also do things with us. This is our testimonies. We, we did a that was kids lining up to testify. We have our volunteers that testified on Sunday. They testified how they had chaos in their lives and how God came and peace came because God intervened. So we started with them testifying about that. So again, it's not, can you see the presentation? It's not standing with the paper. It's acting it out. It's, it's, it's sharing life stories with our children. Okay, we have baptisms. We're very excited about the baptisms. We baptize our kids. They have their own baptismal service after a second service. And we uh, baptize them, our kids, from 10 to 13. Before the baptism, we go through a course with them. What is the Holy Spirit? What is baptism, in, of the, uh, baptism and baptism in the Holy Spirit? So we do that course with them before they go and get baptized. There's our preschoolers having some fun. They in a separate venue. The big kids we take to the, other, the new building that they build now, that is our new building that we'll move into for our big kids, but our smaller kids are in a different house and we keep the two age groups separate. Okay, so just this is worship of praise. <laughs> they love it. That's why I say they don't want to worship because they're just tired after praise. That, um, yeah, so they're just having fun. And our preschoolers. Oh, sorry. That's my daughter. That's my son. <laughs> Not interested. Well, that's what we thought. Okay. So please, all that I say is may you be blessed with favor and a new passion to have the same heart for this next generation as God has for them. Amen. That is our prayer today, is that you will walk out of here with a different mind, knowing that you are not in children's ministry just because they didn't have anyone else. God has placed you there with a specific assignment to make sure that His children is looked after. 
make sure that his children can get encounters with God, they can get saved. They have to get saved before the age of seven. We have to get them saved. Before they leave children's ministry, they have been saved, must be baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit, growing in God, ready to serve. So our grade seven start to serve. They serve in children's ministry. When they want to go and serve in the church, they equipped to do that. All right. I would like you to stand. I, I want to pray for you before you leave. <laughs> Just close your eyes. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can stand here as servants of the living God. Thank you, Lord, that you have placed us. Thank you that you have assigned us for this mission, Lord, that you have called us to. And I pray for every person that is here today. Today, Lord, I pray that passion will rise within their hearts. I pray the wisdom of God upon them as they plan and strategize their children's ministry that you will come first, Lord, that they will know that they're doing it exactly like your heart is beating for our kids. I pray, Lord, that you will add people to their teams. I pray, God, that you will just come and move in supernatural ways within their churches in Jesus' name. Today, Lord, I activate them, that they will move in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They will move in power. They will move in signs and wonders and miracles. We thank you, Lord, that their children's ministry will see the things of God. They will see the, the sick healed. They will see the oppressed delivered, Lord. They will see, Lord, how you are doing miracles within their the kids in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for what you are doing and what you are about to do in every children's ministry. In Jesus' name, amen.